Thank you very much, Mr. Chulin. I write, I don't really speak in public. No, I, I hate this part of the business. Um, but I'm very honored, I'm very honored, truly. Um, you know, seeing people like Ms. Loyola here, uh, Ms. Brenda, Mr. Vernon, you know, the mayor, a good friend from Rotary, people that have come from Orange Walk, from Trial Farm, makes me a bit emotional. You know, when, when you're about to lose hope, God gives hope. You know, seeing the children um, who have responded, the teachers, the schools, um, there is hope. There is much hope. So I'm, I'm very grateful for this, uh, this gesture, this show, show of support that um, you have provided this morning. Um, what can I say? We as a country are going through very difficult moments very difficult moments and um, I believe the time of trials will be coming to us more and more and it's through these times that we need to stand united. And I guess we will receive that spirit of unity as we come to face these moments. More than ever, we need artists. We need writers, dancers, and all these people in the creative arts to express that spirit of Belizean unity, diversity, whereby we can find that strength to face these moments of trial. You know, writing is a very solitary and very challenging vocation. For one thing, you know, like any artist in Belize, we are not able to fully dedicate our time, our energies, our efforts to this art. So we tend to, to be able to, to to deal with this gift in those solitary moments that we may have. And it's like everything in Belize, no? We sometimes end in jobs that will earn us a living. But we must remember that we make a life by how much we serve. Um, so I congratulate each and every one of you because I know that many, many of you teachers and educators, my good friend Luz, who's, who honors me with her presence this morning, have beat the system and we have been able to do the things we enjoy out of the jobs we have. And that's worthy of applauding. I know um, Ms. Florencia Loyola, an activist, you know, a pillar 
of this nation who has done precisely that. And we have many of these unsung heroes in Belize that are moving the country forward and are, and are building the nation. And I guess it's, it's, it's we, are, we are bringing to fruition the vision of George Price, no? that nation building is not anything easy. It's something that requires a joint effort, dedication, and doing the little things with love, with care. That's how we build in our own little way. And God, in his wisdom, I always say, refuses sometimes to make us see the fruits of our jobs, of our efforts to keep us humble, to keep us humble. But things are happening, as the Bible says, no, in the in the dark, in this in the darkness and silence, that's where the seas germinate. So my good friends, I am thankful for this honor that you've prepared. I didn't realize it was it was so big. But it means so much to me in the little ways I have tried to make a difference and to share and to share the gift of the written word. I am grateful to my teachers, to my teachers in primary school, in high school, and at um, in college, who made me believe in me, who enabled me to discover the gift of the written word. Um, I am very much in debt, indebted to the Velasquez teachers in banking. Um, Elisa Castillo in the city, in Maile Garcia in San Ignacio, George Camica, God rest his soul, uh, Marianne Lara at University College of Belize, who prompted me to approach Kubola when I wrote my first short stories, which ended up in this publication, Old Benke. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a, the first edition of Old Benke back in 1990, um, gone 25 years now, which was produced with, with, the, um, with the illustrations. And we have the anniversary edition, which was a reprint of the text with the original illustrations, if you don't know this. But um, this is a product of the people who made me believe in me. And that's why I applaud teachers, because teachers are those people, are those magicians who touch tomorrow today in the classroom. So when I see all these young faces, I cannot fail to say that you are those people that Belize will highly depend on tomorrow. I wish to do a reading first from the, from the anthology If the Pen Never Bend. Um, given that we're very close to celebrating the feast of all saints and all souls, which in no way seeks to promote Halloween, which is something foreign. In this, I, I, I contributed a story called An Encounter with the Dead, which I wish to read on. Finados is a special time of the year for the people in our community. 
It is the time when the spirits of those who have died return to visit the living. It is therefore a celebration for both the living and the dead. Since the spirits of the deceased are only allowed to visit their homes on the 2nd of November, the community welcomes them with prayers and different sorts of food and drink that the dead happened to enjoy when they were alive. The steaming hot food is placed on the table at midday and prayers are offered. Although the spirits are not seen, the people claim that they come and smell the hot food that has been set for them. During one of these finados, a five-year-old girl named Graciela had a very frightening ex experience. It was 11 in the morning on the day of Finados, and Graciela's mother, Felipa, was busy setting the table for the souls who would come at midday. Candila, the rezadora or prayer leader, would soon come to pray the rosary and recite the litany. Graciela, who was ill and lying in her hammock nearby, gazed curiously at the table as her mother placed the traditional foods on it. Along the edge of the long table with the immaculate white tablecloth, Felipa had placed rows of black candles made out from the wax of the takab bee. Graciela remembered what her mom usually told Lucila, her elder sister. Everything must be new and clean, she would tell her. For finados is an offering to the souls who return from purgatory. Everything had to be special for finados. It was even believed that the men who made the candles could not use the bath